What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal finance and personal growth and I am the author of The Wealth Journey. We're going to jump into this topic today. It is called The Average Income by Age. I'm extremely excited about it. And by the way, the averages that we're going to be going over today are American salary averages. I want to know. I've been extremely curious about this stuff since I was a kid and I, I used to get in trouble a little bit because like I would ask questions like, well, how much does my teacher make? How much does my doctor make? How much do police officers make? Like, I just wanted to know. I didn't really know anything about engineers or anything at the time. I just knew that lawyers were getting paid well. I knew that doctors were getting paid well. And then I wanted to know, well, what does everyone else get paid? I just always wanted to know. I've always been curious like that. And even to this day, like when I, whenever I hear of different professions or job titles, I always look it up and I'm like, well, how much do they make? Cause I'm just, I'm curious about it. I think it's extremely fascinating. You put in a certain amount of work to do a certain job. I'm curious, how much are you making? It's just always fascinating to me. But anyway, we're gonna jump straight into this. This is gonna actually be a real time live reaction of me reacting to these numbers. Cause I haven't read any articles about this yet and I have no idea what to expect. I, well, I guess I am kind of going into this with an expectation. The expectation is basically, I'm pretty sure the numbers are gonna be much lower than most of your expectations. And now that I put myself out there, I hope I am right. Anyway, we're gonna jump straight into this. We're gonna go straight to my Safari browser on my phone. Let me go on ahead and record my screen for you guys. Average income by age boom it's actually a popular search topic so i'm not just going to go to any article so i'm going to go to a recent one so that's july 27 2022 that's pretty recent there's smartasset.com you know what this is pretty recent and this is a company i really like mint that into it i made a video about it a few weeks ago if you haven't seen it yet check it out it's dope very 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 good company all right, so before I even look at this article, I'm just gonna read the beginning for you. According to the BLS, the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, the national average salary in 2020 was $56,310. However, many other factors such as location and experience level can also affect what is deemed as a good salary. That is facts, because let me tell you something, when I first was in college and was grinding to get my degree and everything, everyone was saying $50,000, $50,000. They weren't talking about location, they weren't talking about the cost of living, they weren't talking about anything that would have otherwise been important for me to know before I stepped out in the real world. Like what if I made $50,000 in California? I would be done, anyway. Basically, the purpose of this article, it looks like, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but it looks like the purpose of this article is to see what really is a good salary. So we're gonna scroll down a little bit, I'm talking about education, experience level, industry, geographic location. By the way, guys, this is extremely, extremely important. Like, that's why when you're a teenager and you try to get a job, that's why everyone says you need experience because experience is valued over everything. They, they could care less, okay, we get it, you're a high schooler, you want a job, but what about your experience? What can you do? Same thing for college, to be honest with you. And also the industry, like if you're in manufacturing, you're probably gonna make more than someone who works in retail because manufacturing is a lot more intensive, both mentally and physically. And of course, geographic location, we just talked about that. All right, so we're breaking it down now. Average salary in the US by age and gender, which I think is pretty cool. Okay, so it's broken down in weeks, but we're gonna look at the annual stuff. So check it out, 16 to 29. $24,284 annually. That's actually way more than I was making at between 16 and 19. I was making like $250 like every other week. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's pretty good actually for 16 and 19. 20 to 24, looking at 31,564 annually, which isn't that much of a jump up, but you also have to understand people are in different places in life. Some people went to school, some people went to get a trade, some people went straight after high school to just work their way up the ladder that way. And a lot of times what you'll see is some delay in that salary going up per year. And that's what I've seen in my own experience as well. So between 25 and 34, 44,200 annually. Actually, these numbers are way higher than I thought they were gonna be. I, I thought they were essentially gonna be cut in half. But that's actually pretty good. I can't complain about that. 35 to 44, $51,948 annually. 
45 to 54, 52,104 dollars. Okay, so this is where it caps out. Uh, this is for the ladies right here. I haven't went over the men's salaries yet, but um, it's interesting at 45 to 54, that's typically where it caps out. And then 55 to 64 goes down to 49,192. 65 plus it goes down to 47,372. And I have a few suspicions about this. I'm thinking maybe as you get older, you want to tone down the workload. You want to have less stress on your body. You don't want to get sick. You want to spend more time with your family, things like that. I could definitely, definitely understand that. Plus we're starting to get into the retirement ages. So once you hit uh, your retirement, a lot of times people don't have enough invested to make the same they were making per year with the regular salary, but it's like close to it. It's just not as high as it used to be, like in the 50s, for example. So this is actually pretty interesting to see these types of numbers because I would not have expected them to be this high. So now we're gonna talk about the men. All right, so 16 to 19, 26,572. Look, I don't know who was making this kind of money. I don't know if they're talking about people who, you know what I'm saying? I was in college, like I didn't, I definitely didn't work all year long. So I would have never made 26 anything. Like, I don't even know if I made $2,600 back then. So that's really good. 20 to 24, we're looking at $34,684 per year. So at, on average, I'm seeing about a two to $3,000 difference with the men and women per year. Um, so it's pretty nice to see that gap start to close a little bit. It's not as extreme as it used to be. All right, so now 25 to 34, we have $49,400 per year. That's actually really not bad. 35 to 44, we've got $64,064 per year. This isn't bad money, guys. I mean, I know you probably hear on social media like these different expectations of like what men and women expect their spouses to make and things like that and with them coming up with crazily outrageous numbers but when you look at these numbers this is the average across america so any state you can think of any city you can think of i mean you, you have to really understand that this plays into averaging everything out and there's going to be some outliers both on the low and on the high end that's just how it works 45 to 54 that's where the real money is 69,368 dollars annually that i mean really that is it's pretty cool this is just the average. So you know there's a lot of them making six figures and up. From 55 to 64, you see it drop down to $63,648 a year. So still, we do have a common ground amongst the salaries dropping. This could be for various reasons. It could be that more injuries take place and then they have to go without work for a little while. It could be something like, hey, I'm gonna step down as general manager and now I'm gonna be a supervisor because I want a less heavy workload, spend more time with my family, but still make good money. I mean, things like this happen every single day. I've seen people do it throughout my entire career. It's a very normal thing. And of course, as we get into the retirement age of 65 plus, we've got 57,304. Same exact argument I have is I'm pretty sure they're living off their retirement and their retirement is just less than what they were making per year after that and just for kicks and giggles we're going to go over something that is slightly controversial because this site has everything average salary in the u.s by education so so let's say it's less than a high school diploma thirty thousand seven hundred and eighty four annually okay i can see that high school diploma only thirty eight thousand seven hundred ninety two annually some college but no degree forty three thousand 316 annually that's pretty interesting because usually places require you to have a degree so the fact that some college literally bumps up your pay scale by as much as five thousand dollars a year is actually pretty interesting associate degree forty six thousand one hundred twenty four annually okay bachelor's degree sixty four thousand eight hundred and ninety six that's that's pretty accurate i can't i can't even like argue with that one master's degree 77,844 I don't know I would challenge that because I have quite a bit of friends who have master's degrees and I just know a lot of people with master's degrees in general and if they're in certain fields then yeah but a lot of them don't make 77 it's not anything against them. It's just facts. Like they'll tell you themselves, like, bro, I went to all this college and I don't even make what they're telling me I'm going to be making. I'm just saying, that's why this 
also breaks down per industry, i.e. per profession. So we're going to jump into all of that because I want you guys to know. And I'm curious myself. I ain't read this yet. So check this out. Uh, professional degree. Don't really know what that means, but 96,772 annually. I've never heard of just like a professional degree. Maybe I've been out of school for that long, but I've only been out of school for like six years. I, this is crazy right here. But anyway, doctoral doctoral degree, 97,916. I can see that if you go into like a um, professor type of job, you're teaching high level courses in like a college type of setting that makes a lot of sense. I don't see it being too applicable in the corporate world. I literally have not met a single person in my corporate career that works where I work at that has a doctorate in something, like a doctorate in engineering, a doctorate in HR, or a doctorate in business. I've never in my life met someone who had a doctorate in that that doesn't work in a college. Facts. So that may be true for a select few people, the salary, but um, I don't know. I think um, for me, at least, anything above a bachelor's degree is a complete and utter waste of money. But that's just my opinion, and I stand on that. Yeah, I'm going to link this article down in the description so y'all can see what's up with it because it, it shows you the game. But anyway, um, average salary in the U.S. by industry. This is where things get interesting, and I may be able to speak to some of this because I've had experience with some of this. So... Food preparation, 27650 Healthcare support, $32,250. Personal care and service, $32,610. Farming, fishing, and forestry, $33,310. Okay. I don't know much about those industries, but I hope this is giving you some insight on what industries you might want to go for, especially if you're younger and you haven't decided yet. You can at least see and look into the future of what you could expect to be making. If I could go back in time, I would have done this. I did a version of this, but I didn't have an article that was as detailed as this one from Mint. Shout out Mint. Anyway, construction and extraction. We got $53,940. Wow. I did not realize education would be more than construction. I thought they would be more even, but you know, good. I mean, I'm glad that I'm seeing that education is getting paid more, like our teachers and everybody. They are responsible for the future of this world. They get to coach, mentor, teach, and guide kids, whether they're little kids or they're like adult kids that are like, you know, 16, 17, 18 years old. They are responsible for the future. So it's extremely refreshing to see that education has gone up in their um, salaries because I remember growing up and hearing teachers complain about their salaries and I don't get paid enough to do this. And like, they obviously said it more professional than that. Well, some didn't, but I'm just saying it's pretty interesting to see that. So now we're going to go to art, design, entertainment, sports, and media, 64,400. I'm pretty sure that's skewed. And I would almost bet my next paycheck that you could literally reverse education with art, design, entertainment, sports, and media, because I think that number is skewed based off of the fact that it has the word media in it, and it's lumped all these unrelated things together, like art and entertainment and sports are not like the same profession, first of all. Second, the word media is in there, which makes me think it has YouTube salaries in there, and there's some people who make it really big on YouTube who make six figures a year just off of their AdSense revenue, not to mention core sales they might have, not to mention books they might be selling and things of that nature. So I, I think that's probably misleading. Like what industry are we talking about? Are we talking about sports medicine? Are we talking about sports entertainment? Are we talking about art? Like, you know, I'm an art teacher. Are we talking about design, like architectural design? Like what kind of design are we talking about here? There's a multifaceted thing within each of these. I'm just kind of not buying this number. Uh, business and financial operations, again, kind of think it's clumping two things together that don't necessarily relate. You could definitely be an accountant in the field of financial operations, and you can definitely be in business having absolutely nothing to do with the finance department. There's operations within business. There's logistics within business. There's a lot of things, but for the most part, from what I'm looking at right here, the $80,000, $80,680 a year, 
that does look to be accurate and it seems to be probably the average of everyone that I know that works in that field, I would say it's pretty accurate. Architecture and engineering, 90300 mm, Engineers don't get paid as much as they used to. I would know because I have a degree in engineering and I'm not even, I don't even practice as an engineer because I know I make way more doing what I do than being an engineer. And I'm not saying that to like brag, that's just a fact. Like I literally went to school to be an engineer, not to be a manager, but here I am. It's a lot more lucrative. And I remember years ago, my general manager way back in the day told me, he was like, hey man, like if you want more for your pockets, you gotta go the management route. I was already a manager, but he, he reinforced that thought. So that was one of the few positive things that he's actually said to me. No shade though, no shade. Anyway, computer and mathematical, um, when I think of that, I think of companies like Google, Microsoft, Facebook, Apple, Intel. So the, I'm pretty sure it is a high type of salary and they probably also give their workers restricted stock units within the company. And the companies I just listed, or at least some of the companies I just listed have pretty good stocks that then give you return and, you know, technically that's part of their income. So they may have something to do with it, but I, I, I think the numbers here are pretty good. And it also breaks down how to get a, a high paying job and things of that nature. I also go over that stuff. I'm not gonna go over it in this video, but I think it's interesting what we found here in this video. It's pretty interesting how averages are and how they work, but um, I hope you got some insight on it. I hope you got to see that it's not just based off of age because I used to think, like when I was younger, I really used to think well, you're not gonna make any money until you're older because I would always hear things like, well, men hit their financial peak at the age of, let's say, 45, right? Or 35 or some age that I was nowhere near. I'd be like 10 years old hearing these things, right? And it's not necessarily true. We, we don't, obviously the thing in life that's constant is time. So obviously the older you are, the more opportunities you had to make money. But at the same time, we don't really do the digging on, well, why? Is it that men hit their peak with their pay at 45? Why is it that, why is it that males tend to make more than females? No one ever thought, when I was growing up at least, no one ever thought to break it down by industry. Well, actually Reggie, this is why, and this is why. Things make a lot more sense when you break the data down, which I appreciate about this article. I actually didn't read the article before I, I was reacting to it in real time. But the thing is, when you break it down by industry, now it makes sense. But anyway, this video is getting kind of long. I've been rambling long enough, but um, this video I think is very interesting. And if you're someone who wants to make more money or at least manage the money that you do have a lot better and learn about investing tactics and, and get some resources from me for free that actually show you how to be better with your personal finances, hit the link in the description and you will not be sorry. You will be getting emails from me weekly describing to you how to get through life financially, how to adult, how to invest, all that good stuff, books to read, all kinds of recommendations, articles, YouTube video links, all that stuff. And all it takes is you to just type your email in and send it and then boom, you're getting free emails from me every single week. And sometimes I might send two emails in a week. Just depends on how I'm feeling, but just know if you want it, it is there. But anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.